good morning welcome back to open med school i am dr andrews professor of medicine and principal pk das institute of medical sciences just have a recap the jvp consists of three positive waves the a wave is total contraction c is due to the bulging of the tricuspid valve into the right atrium and the b wave is due to continuous filling of the atrial occurring systole normally we can see only the a wave and the b wave c wave is not visible so we should only be concentrating on the a and b the pressure changes that is occurring in the right atrium is reflected in the internal jugular vein so let us look into the common abnormalities first we will take the abnormalities of the a wave the a wave can be absent so how can you get an absent a wave when there is atrial fibrillation the atria is not contracting so only it is contracting like a bag of worms there is no effective contraction so there is no rise in pressure so atrial fibrillation is a classical condition where you get absence of a wave so here in this picture this is the tracing of the atrial fibrillation there is no a wave c v wave c and v may be seen so atrial fibrillation absence of a wave so second condition if you think about is prominent a wave so when will you get when you can you get a prominent a wave whenever the atria is contracting more vigorously you will get a forceful or a large a wave so this condition can produce when the compliance of the right ventricle is decreased that is the right ventricle is not expanding properly the atria has to contract more vigorously so what is the typical condition if the tricuspid valve is stenosed tricuspid stenosis can lead on to a prominent a wave but most often tricuspid stenosis is associated with the atrial fibrillation so it's not a common condition second it is not a common condition second is any condition that produces right ventricular hypertrophy anything that produces right ventricular hypertrophy the distensibility of the ventricle is decreased and that will lead on to increased force of contraction of the right atrium so what is the condition that produces right ventricular hypertrophy any patient with the pulmonary arterial hypertension so pa any patient with the pulmonary atrial hypertension can have a prominent a wave so ph is the typical condition that you think regarding prominent a wave another important condition is this what is called the cannon wave or a cannon a wave so what is a cannon wave cannon wave occurs when the right atrium is contracting against a closed av valve so when the av valve is closed and the atrium is contracting it produces a wave as the blood cannot enter the right ventricle what can happen is only go upwards so that will be producing a giant a wave so which condition can you get a atrial contraction or a closed av valve when the atrium and ventricle are dissociated atrium contracts at its own rate ventricle contracts at its own rate they are dissociated atrium is contracting ventricle is contracting there no coordination is there so typical condition is complete heart block so complete heart block produces cannon waves and these cannon waves are irregular cannon waves because it is by chance only atrium is contracting at the rate of 72 per minute and ventricle is contracting at the rate of 40 50 and at time they co contracts and that produces a giant a wave cannon wave another condition where you can get a cannon wave is so the, take the suppose the impulse arises from the junction it stimulates the atria it stimulates the ventricle so impulse goes up and impulse goes down so it each contraction atrium and ventricle are co contracting so you can get in junctional rhythm you can get a so another condition remember is a junctional rhythm you can get cannon waves 
in bendiclar tachycardia again what is happening a tree is contracting at its rate ventricle is contracting at its own rate so again you can get a cannon waves so this is one of the important differentials or findings that can be utilized to differentiate a supraventricular tachycardia from a ventricular tachycardia in ventricular tachycardia you can get a cannon wave because atrial rhythm is different from that of the ventricular rhythm ventricle is contracting at its own rate that is a ventricular tachycardia in supraventricular tachycardia the ventricular rhythm is generated from the atria supraventricular so there will not be no cannon wave so fast rate presence of the neck cannon wave means it is a ventricular tachycardia so these are the importance of looking at the cannon wave so we have div divided the cannon waves into regular cannon wave irregular cannon wave the mechanism of cannon wave is as we know this co-contraction that is the av dissociation look at the neck of this patient he is admitted with the tachycardia you can see some pulsatile waves at the root of the neck and this is the appearance of an a wave this is a long a giant one this is a giant a wave that is seen in so patient is having so can waves are useful in differentiating supraventricular from ventricular tachycardia and if it is due to a complete heart block it will not be regular it will be an irregular can wave so here you are seeing a regular can wave it can be either due to a junctional tachycardia or ventricular tachycardia hope this point is clear so in this session we have discussed about the waves in the jvp and what are the abnormalities of the a wave namely absent a wave prominent a wave cannon wave the cannon waves are divided into regular and irregular cannon wave and usefulness of cannon wave in diagnosing complete heart block differentiating supraventricular from ventricular tachycardia a prominent a wave can also be seen in first degree heart block where the ventricular activation of is still late and the atrial events are transmitted much more better into the interna jugular vein as the av valves are not getting opened early the next session we'll be discussing about the abnormalities of the b wave and the distance